Now to the latest from Mexico, where rescue efforts continue amid the heartbreak of this week's huge earthquake. Our correspondent Stephanie March is in Jolita, in Morelos, one of the areas outside of Mexico City that's hardest hit area, and she joins us now. Steph, good morning. So tell us what's going on there. So Virginia, I'm here in Jojutla, which is a city about a two and a half hour drive from Mexico City heading to the south. Uh, and as you can see, just from what's behind me, there are just scenes of devastation across this city of about 50,000 people. We understand it's about 25 metres from the epicentre and people say that they just felt this earthquake and it was like nothing they've ever felt before, including the one in 1985 that caused massive casualties and damage in Mexico City. You can see behind me that there was a building, uh, essentially it was a convenience store with a house on top. Now it's on a 45 degree angle. It's on the verge of tipping into the river behind it. It's butted up against a bridge that's already officials have determined is so fragile cars and trucks can't drive over it. Uh, so there's a good chance it could cause further damage to that if it does uh, keep tilting into the very fragile soil uh, on the riverbed there. And this is just one of 150 buildings in this city that authorities say have been severely damaged or are in the process of collapsing. Uh, so it's a pretty serious situation here. Now, the people that live in those 150 buildings and homes, many of them have sought shelter uh, in various refuges that have set up across the city. We went to one earlier in the day. Essentially, it was a sodden piece of grassy area owned by the military where they'd set up some army tents and there was dozens of people just sleeping under these tents pretty much in the dirt. We spoke to one gentleman, Jose de Jesus, uh, who was there with his wife and his three kids all under the age of eight. Uh, we've seen their house. It was absolutely flattened in the earthquake and uh, he's really at a loss uh, to what to do next. And him and his family are still really reeling from what they felt two days ago. Let's have a listen to Jose de Jesus. What really happened, it was just the earth. It just started shaking real hard in it. And, uh, and I could tell you that it, 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 it makes you feel like you can't do nothing about it. it you see bricks and rocks falling everywhere and, yeah. and you can't currently do nothing about it. You hear people yelling and screaming and trying to get them out and, and the only thing you hear again is start shaking and you got to get out of there. And the, the, my family is the first thing that I was just thinking about. Hopefully nothing happened to them and they're okay because I told them if it shakes again, I, put, I gave him a, a place to, to hide, where to sit, and that's what she did. She put him there in that place, and, and then look, they're here. Jose de Jesus there. Stephanie, back in Mexico City, of course, still the, the, the eyes of the global community on the frantic rescue efforts there at the Enrique Rebsamen School and the hopes that some children who are left behind there and seem to be still alive might be rescued. So, Virginia, just in the last hour or so, reports have emerged of a Navy spokesperson saying they actually don't believe that there's a girl trapped in that elementary school anymore. They haven't given any detail as to what's changed since yesterday because, as you mentioned, the world has spent the last two days watching uh, and expecting there to possibly be a rescue of mm. this young girl that's been believed to have been trapped inside. Uh, it's really confusing as to what the situation is. There are some reports that there is still someone trapped and possibly alive who may be a school worker uh, but it really seems that perhaps those hopes that one of those missing children were still alive under the rubble uh, may be fading or have faded very quickly today. Which would be incredibly sad given the death toll in that school already. Stephanie March thanks so much for that report. Now tomorrow